Good morning. I was afraid I was might have to cancel this because of votes, but apparently we're just going to hold votes open all day, so I got opportunities. Works out pretty well for all of us. On Sunday, Americans found themselves paying on average $4 per gallon. Now, that was the highest since the Great Recession. Three days later, the sticker shock at the pump has only gotten worse. Today, we're paying $4.25 a gallon, the highest ever. And that's up for them. $2.53 was the national average when Biden took office. Now, if you're in California, drivers are waking up to a state average of $5.57 per gallon. President Biden keeps breaking records. But unfortunately, those records are breaking America's budget. With prices this high, families are expected to pay $2,000 extra dollars just for the cost of fuel alone. And on top of that, the extra cost because of inflation at the highest it's been in the last 40 years. Yes, I know oil is an international market. But the main reason Americans are paying so much is bad domestic policies. These aren't Putin prices, they're President Biden's prices. Even a Democrat pollster recently admitted that blaming Russia for gas prices is a good news because the rest was just ambiguous. And yes, Mr. President, your policies are holding back domestic energy production. Your allies on Capitol Hill have actually called on American companies to, loyal, to lower oil production. Remember, they subpoenaed all the companies to come in, and this was the question that they got. Are you embarrassed as an American company that your production is going up while the European counterparts are going down? Congressman, as we have already heard, uh, demand for energy is going up in the world. Okay, We're so you're not embarrassed. Future. And do you commit to do anything? I'm just asking an open question. It's not, like not a gotcha question. Do you commit to do anything to matching your European count counterparts to try to bring the, de the actual demand of oil production down? Uh, Congressman, with all due respect, I'm very proud of our company and what we do. I'm proud of the companies in so, this industry. So, no, you won't, you won't, you won't reduce the solution. I don't think Europe wants to be Europe today. I think they realize they made a mistake. But the leaders on the Democratic Party want to put us in the same weakness and strengthen Putin's hand. Now, as you can see on this graph, the upward trajectory in gas prices started the very day President Biden took office, when we got one party rule in Washington, D.C. By contrast, Republicans have been warning for over a year that Biden's war on American energy would lead to higher costs at the pump. In fact, I compiled a few clips of just a few of those moments, so let's roll that tape. Stop at the next gas station and take a picture of what gasoline costs, then come back and ask that same question in eight months. When you're paying more, check the price of gasoline today and tell me where it is in a year. You could thank Joe Biden for that. Go and look at what the price of oil is today and what you pay for in gasoline. I promise you a year from now, the action of what this president has done has only increased it. The affordability is going to go through the roof. Look what has happened in the short amount of time they've controlled all. Your gasoline price is up. Biden has created a crisis on the border. And your gas is going up. Remember, gas price today, national gas price, has not been this high since President Biden was vice president. The policies of Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden are destroying this nation. We got gasoline lines, we got stations that have no gas, we got gasoline in Virginia, $7 a gallon. Six months of Biden administration, we have the highest gas prices in seven years. After his policies caused gas prices to skyrocket, he said he would lower the gas price. He hasn't done it, he's even made it worse. And no, not the measly two cents, the G triple C, thanks, is lowering it is a reduction. He depleted 50 million barrels of oil from our emergency supply and has done nothing to reverse this anti-American energy agenda that he has contributed to spike our costs. We've been warning them all along, just like we warned them at the beginning of their first bill would cause inflation. This is exactly what has happened and Americans are left paying the price. Not only did House Republicans warn them this would happen, but we repeatedly offered obvious solutions to the problem. Build the pipeline, increase production and distribution, 
and fast-track energy exports to our allies. By contrast, Democrats' plan to lower prices today is to blame Russia, buy expensive electric vehicles, and beg OPEC for a bailout. If you look here, you've watched time and again where the Democratic leadership goes after American companies that produce energy to produce less, but ask those countries with dictators and other leaders to produce more. You know, the president said, the buck stops with me. Then he says he can't do much about it now. Russia's responsible. His Secretary of Transportation tells Americans to go buy a $56,000 electric car. His State Department wants to buy oil from Iran and Venezuela trading one dictator for another. And on Capitol Hill, the Democrats' conference chair, Hakeem Jeffries, said, rising gas prices have not come up in their caucus meeting. Can you imagine that? They represent millions of Americans, and not one of them have raised the issue that every single household is talking about today. as costing them more than $2,000. I think they're focused on the wrong issues. In other words, Democrats will do nothing but what is actually needed. We need more production in America. The solution to getting our country back on track to returning to energy independence couldn't be more straightforward. We offered the American energy independence from Russia bill on the floor. We're going to offer it again. 220 Democrats voted no. I guess they'll have a lot of time to think about it before it's offered today as they're trying to figure out whether they could pass a rule. With that, let's open it up for questions. Manu, you're sitting in the front. Why don't we go for yeah. how? What happened? Uh, I ruptured my bicep. I Working out? Last week. Um, <laughs> and it's a ski, a skiing incident. He came and tried to fight you. So. Said, uh, you know, yes. wore a helmet though, right? No, I will, yes. I, I was not wearing a helmet, but it was it was it involved my son, but he's he's okay. He's so, okay. Uh, me, on the other hand, I'll be fine. Did you have surgery? Surgery last week. Kevin Brady had that happen. Yeah. I'll talk to him. Right. Uh, so with, with respect to what happened, what's happening in Ukraine, uh, the former president has praised Vladimir Putin's move very savvy and as genius. Do you agree with him? I do not think anything savvy or genius about Putin. I think Putin is evil. I think he's a dictator. And I think he's murdering people right now. And I think um, what has happened, I went to Ukraine taking Republicans and Democrats a number of years ago. When I came back from that trip, I requested a meeting with then the Vice President of America, Joe Biden. I went to the Situation Room. And I advocated that we should sell them javelins, based upon Russia had come into Ukraine before. They have no defense to be able to fight back. The uniqueness of U Ukraine is they don't ask for American men or women to come fight for them. All they ask is to be able to supply the weapons that they could defend themselves, defend their own freedom. That administration said no. President Trump said yes. It gave him some ability. But I think the slowness of what has happened this year, and I've raised this to President Biden earlier in the year when he first communicated with Putin. I did not think sanctions would affect Putin. He's lived under sanctions for decades. I believe that you should have taken action to allow Ukraine to buy weapons early. That could deter Putin from entering and evading. President Biden had intel that said he would invade. But at the whole time he said he, President Biden would do nothing till after the invasion, he gave that same information to China that shared it with Russia. There's so many mistakes of why this is happening. From the way that President Biden exited Afghanistan, losing 13 members of our military, showing Putin a weakness, and this is a question that I continue to ponder. He provided them Nord Stream 2 pipeline. After they invaded Ukraine, they pulled the sanctions on it, made it that you could not have it, to weaken the economy of Russia. If that weakens the economy of Russia, closing the XL pipeline, wouldn't that weaken the economy of America too then? Just wondering. Yes, ma'am. Two questions, if I can. Do you believe that the decision to kind of say no to a no-fly zone is the appropriate one? Look, um, entering a, if America goes out and does a no-fly zone, we're entering uh, 
the ability to enter into the war. I think that's, I think that would have to raise the question. I think that would have to be debated in Congress. Um, so I think that would be a real challenge for us right now. And Mike Kent said that there's no room in the Republican Party for Putin apologists. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, what I would do with on your first question, though, I would supply Ukraine with the MiGs. When you're watching day after day innocent people being shot down when they were told that there was a ceasefire to take a route where Russia comes in and murders these individuals. Ukraine wants to defend themselves. Their pilots know how to fly the MiGs. If you're going to supply them with javelins, supply them with the MiGs as well. Let them defend themselves. That's the difference. Yes. Supporting the, the Russia bill and the omnibus? Yes. Both but, but I wish we did something more. You cannot just shut off Russian gas and not produce in America. I know the president looks to try to go to Iran or Venezuela. That's one dictator for another just trading it. And I'll give you an example in my own home state. You wouldn't think California, but California is blessed to have a lot of, a lot of ability when it comes to natural resources. Since Gavin Newsom has taken over, he has reduced the production of um, energy in um, California by more than 20% when it comes to crude. That's about 89,000 barrels. But you still need the oil. So what's he replaced it with? 50,000 barrels a day from Russia. On, a, on his executive orders, he shut down permitting. He shut down uh, it, it being a hydracking going into the wells themselves. We could produce all we need in California that he's knocked away from Russia and be able to produce even more. That's what we're looking at. When America produces their own energy, America is stronger and the world is safer. Yes, sir. Uh, following up on the MiGs situation, what did you make of the Pentagon saying that the move to get those planes into Ukraine via Germany uh, was untenable? I think they're wrong. I think the, the longer they take, more people will die. Um, I don't understand if you can supply them with a javelin and Poland wants to give them MiGs and they want to defend themselves, why won't you allow somebody to defend themselves? Especially when they believe in freedom. Especially this was unprovoked. Putin is evil, and what he's doing to these people is devastating. It's not just America glued to the set. The world is watching this. They're asking to defend themselves. They've never once asked for American men and women in uniform to come and fight. All they want is not to fight with sticks. Allow them that opportunity. And the longer you wait, it just goes back to the very point. If you had the intel that they were going to invade, would you really think the best question is, I'll put sanctions on you after you invade? And then when you put the sanctions on, you listen to President Biden said, this won't work for months, though. What if you had provided them weapons they could buy, deter Russia from ever invading, how many lives would have been saved? We would be in a different situation today. And we should take that exact same lesson and not slow down any weapon sales to Taiwan either. Yes, sir. Uh, turning to gas prices, if, if I could, um, I know there's been some discussion uh, from governors about suspending the gas tax. Your thoughts, your, your thoughts at the conference? Uh, I think that would be smart. Let, let's... 2,000 more dollars people are going to have to pay simply because their policies are wrong. But that's not a long-term solution because that, that gas tax goes to the transportation building. So what you really need to do is raise the production in America so that would lower the price, it would lower inflation, more Americans would be working, America would be stronger. We could become not just energy independent but energy dominant, that we could provide the natural gas for Europe and others, so they won't look to Putin. They won't look to Iran. And you know what that means for everyone like me that cares about our environment? Our natural gas is 41% cleaner than Russian natural gas. So let's do something smart. Let's make America stronger, the world safer, and actually a little cleaner. Yes, ma'am. Group that's kind of urging Republicans to put a pause button on this, to not settle for small victories like an increase in defense spending. 
the, the conservative group is the sister of the Heritage Foundation. Do you think mm -hmm. there's strong support from all Republicans in your caucus for this funding bill? Or there are some who are hesitant? On the, fun the funding bill is going to be split into two. When you're looking at the security and you're looking at the where the world is today and, and what President Biden requested from the military, it wasn't enough. Um, it wasn't putting us in a place that we could be stronger and protect ourselves. And I think what we're finding in there that Democrats have a problem even passing a rule. Um, I think Republicans look to, just like in the NDAA, the number of successes we had to modernize our military, to be able to protect from that sense. There's a lot of people that look at that, that that's a positive, not on the overall bill itself, no. Just to be clear, you're going to support the Ukraine piece and not the omnibus bill. That's, that's where you are. Well, there's a security. The, the, the omnibus bill will be voted in two. And the first vote, if it still stays the way it is, I call it the security, so it's the DOD, um, the others. I would support that, yes. Yes, ma'am. Hi, thank you. Um, can you just reiterate, are you in support of the um, Russia oil ban bill, and do you believe your caucus? Your, your caucus? I'm in support of it, but I d it's not the bill I would have written. It doesn't go far enough. And, and it's, you can't just ban Russian oil without producing in America. That's why we continue to bring up the American independence energy bill from, from Putin. And do you believe the conference will support it? Um, I believe there'll be a number of people in the conference that will support it. Look, our conference overwhelmingly does not want Russian oil. We want American oil. And unfortunately, the Democrats are in the majority, so they stop short. Can you also just say why are there um, motions to adjourn right now? What is the purpose of that on the floor? What is the purpose of that? That the Democrats dropped a bill that's thousands of pages in the middle of the night last night that's $1.5 trillion. Gives people a little more time to read it. But... It's not holding anything up. The things that are holding things up are the Democrats can't pass their own rule. I mean, they have the record for holding the vote open the longest. They have the first place and second place. I don't know what they're trying for today. I know they got a retreat. No question today? Yes, sir. Uh, any update on your conversations with uh, Congressman Gosar and Green? Yes, I've talked to Green. I'm still waiting to talk to Gosar. And? I've talked to him. But you said, I think you told Jake and I Manu that there's no place for... The there isn't no place for that. There's no place for what has gone on with that organization by far, and there never will be in this party, and it will never be tolerated. And will she go again? Yes. You, no, she will not go again. Do you get any repercussions for her? Uh, look, at my, my conversations with my members are exactly that, and uh, I appreciate you asking. Well, I, on this topic, I mean, three years ago when Steve King made comments that were some mm -hmm. white supremacists, you supported kicking him off this committee. I removed um, him from committee. Yeah, and obviously Green and Gozar are already off their committees. Mm -hmm. You said in November that you'd return them to their committees and use that they might even get better committee assignments. Do you mm -hmm. stand by that still? They have the ability to be able to get committees based upon that time when it comes. A different question. In oral arguments at the Supreme Court back in December, I'm in the Dobbs versus Jackson women's health case. A Biden solicitor, General Elizabeth Preloger, referred to an unborn baby as a baby. Was she right? Uh, say that again. I'm not an attorney. Go through this. We're going to debate a Supreme Court case that I wasn't at and what this said. Uh, yes. So back in December, <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Kuehlover, Biden Solicitor General, she made a statement in, in referring to Justice Clarence Thomas' Thomas's question, asking what the right was that she was specifically seeking in that case. And she referred to an unborn baby as a baby. Do you think she was right? Yeah, I'm not, not referred to the case. I'm pro-life. Uh, so I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but I would always take the life of the child. That answers your question without knowing what you're asking, yes. Other than that, uh, stay safe, stay off the slopes, um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, we won't see you later, but it could be a long day.